So preliminaries of Dabosh or Dabochi Swayble. So now if you look at first of all you need to understand a few basic things if you want to get into it. The first thing is we designed a har wavelet in the previous lecture. So out of har, how can we understand what do we learn from it? What do we learn from it? The first thing if you look at the low pass filter and the high pass filter or the filter from the both side, they were some of some sort like this, okay? One plus Z inverse by two on this side and one minus Z inverse by two on this side. What does this mean? What is this kind of filter? If you look at the response of uh, H of Z, then the response of this filter is something like this. Just H e raised to the power g omega versus omega. When omega is equal to 0, then the response is equal to 1. Isn't it? And rest when omega becomes equal to pi, then e raised to the power j pi becomes minus 1, so it gets 0. So the response is something like this. While if you see this, then the response is something like this. At zero, it is uh, at zero, it is zero, and at one, it is maximum. So this filter is obviously a high pass filter. Uh, this is obviously a low pass filter, and this filter is definitely a high pass filter because it passes all the low frequencies with a higher amplitude. And this passes always lower, uh, uh, always the higher frequency with a high amplitude. So in that hence we clearly understand that what has been done is a sort of a segregation of a signal in a sort of uh, different bands of or we can say a frequency division multiplexing has been done to some extent of the signal. Or we can say that there is this signal, so we are trying to transmit some high frequency things and some low frequency things in the frequency band but now if you look at the way in it in the way in which it is occurring we understand that this cannot be just limited to har wavelet there are multiple levels of uh, different forms of wavelet like WG's wavelet is a series of wavelets out of which har is just one of them so first, if we want to go, we need to understand a few basics of uh, Z-transform, which I want to just mention very quickly. Okay. So, now in Z-transform, first of all you need to understand what is down sampling or what we tell. Um, down sampling by 2 or dissection. Now this decimation process or the down sampling by 2, what do you think? Is it an invertible process or not invertible? This process is not invertible. This system of downsampling or decimation is non invertible. Simply, you can think I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and here I get 1, 3, and 6. Now, am I able to retain this 2, 4, and 6? No, definitely not. So, okay, 2, 4, 1, 3, and 5 here. So, in that sense, I am actually not able to retain one of the two samples. So that sense it is non-invertible. But in some ways 
we can actually s make some sort of an arrangement in which we can make this system a invertible uh, sort of look like invertible now what do we do actually just look at the process or uh, representation of this decimation process we will actually introduce an introduce an alias this is very important this is very rarely mentioned in books even alias we will introduce an alias by uh, down sampling or decimation now what is this introduction of an alias let me tell you what it is uh first if you want to understand this i want you to understand the process in which we do down sampling so what actually aliasing is let me explain how does this aliasing happen if you think of a discrete signal like how to approach it let me explain the way step 1 take the discrete signal as continuous simple string so for example i have this discrete signal let me say 3 5 and 1 okay if this is my discrete signal how will i write is like 3 times delta of uh, t plus 5 times delta of t minus 1 plus 1 times delta of t minus 2 so in that sense you have to look at the signal that's the trick that's the trick in word now how does this trick is useful i am tell, telling you now just think of a signal in terms of down sampling operation i have this suppose 3 5 1 4 9 some signal okay 0 1 2 3 4 now when i when i down sample the signal i have to retain i have to eliminate this this similarly so one way one way of doing this down sampling operation is compressing it like let me write this it's equivalent as x of t because i'm trying to think of it as an impulse state and t when i down sample it it becomes x of 2t and then i multiply after doing this this signal will shrink so this the indices will be multi will be uh, multiplied by this factor 1 by 2 factor so what will be the new indices the new indices will be 1 by 2 2 by 2 3 by 2 4 by 2 and 0 by 2. okay because this is the scaling factor of the new so the new signal will be shrinked are you trying to say the original single signal was this much so the new shrink signal will be this much and now after this i will multiply it with impulse tree uh in sense how would the new signal be let me draw it again the new signal will be something like this 3 five 1 4 and 0 this is 1 and it to the signal is my so the signal is shrink this is x of 2t this is half this is 3 by 2 now what will i do is that i will multiply it with an impulse strain signal in such a way that it has 1 on 0 then again or uh, 1 on 1 Then again, one on two. Similarly, are you getting what I am trying to do? So, what I am doing is that I am first doing x of two t, 
the this operation then multiplied by uh, impulse gain this is very much possible but there is big but because when this is how we are thinking in continuous space but when we use the discrete this one half this three half uh, three by two this signal are almost this cannot be represented in discrete integer values because they do not belong to they do not belong to integers they do not belong to integers and therefore what we do is that we first multiply it with an impulse train one then this zero then this one then this zero then this one first we multiply it with an impulse train and then we do down sampling operation so when we multiply it with this this is gone this is gone we have left with this thing only because we have multiplied with the impulse train and now we compress now we can represent this so because now we are left with sorry this is not 1 this is 2 this is 4 and now we can simply do the uh, the compression because now we have all multiples of 2 so we can uh, down sample it in such a way like 3 1 and 9 It's zero, one, and two. So you see how uh, we are doing this process. So now let us try to mathematically understand. See, this is very important because you will get the the um, the fundamental of how we are doing this. See, so now what we did is that x n we first multiplied with an impulse train signal. Let me tell uh, tell that signal as h of n. we multiplied it with impulse gain and then what we did is that we uh, let this signal be y of n and then after this multiplication what we did is that y of 2n is the output is the decimated output okay so far so so clear so now how it how is an impulse train now we come at representing of an impulse train it's very simple actually 0 1 2 3 At four there is one. So how can I write? Just simply see. Can't I write it in in a way? One raised to the power n plus minus one to the power n is equal to h of n. Can't I write it something like this? I can. This is how I have to represent it because. Uh, uh just see when i put n is equal to 0 then this becomes equal to okay there is a half factor also okay now it's better just when n is equal to 0 then this will be 1 plus 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 then when there is uh, n is equal to sorry this 0 then n equal to 1 then it will be 1 minus 1 by 2, which is equal to 0. Similarly, this is how we represent the uh, this impulse train signal. So now we got a mathematical representation of the signal. So now, uh, in like what I did finally is that I took this x n. You know, I multiplied with this h n. Multiply, not convert, which is 1 to the power n plus minus 1 to the power n. Divided by two, and then I obtain this value, which is the down sampled or decimated output. 
Now let us try to find the Z transform of this signal. So now what will be the YZ? YZ will not be nothing but uh, summation x of n. Let me take the half offset x of n into 1 to the power n which is nothing but CMS x n. Z raised to the power minus n. Let me write it completely also. x of n plus x of n times minus 1 to the power n times z raised to the power minus n. So can't I write this something like this? Summation xn z raised to the power minus n plus summation x of n minus z to the power n because this minus 1 and minus z gets combined. Or in other words I can write it like half x of z plus x of minus z. So now you can see that along with this x, x of z which is the z transform in the decimation there is something called x of minus z also. So if you see this is frequency z is equal to e to square j omega and this is uh, h of z then along with this this signal is also coming. So this something is what is called aliasing effect that this part is coming. Now we will see how we will eliminate this part in the future but for now just understand what this, this means and after this what do we do? After this uh, we, uh, we compress the signal x of 2n. This final y out is equal to this y of 2n. So just tell me, just tell me this important point that when we compress a signal what is the effect on z transform? Effect of compression on z transform. Simple enough just see x of 2n this is something some compression z to the power minus n summation this is what we have to find in terms of x of z now we know we can take this 2n is equal to some m 2n is equal to m so n is equal to m by 2 z raised to the power minus m by 2 summation is equal to summation x of m z raised to the power half raised to the power minus m doesn't this look similar some sort of similar it is nothing but x of z to the power half we can also look at something like that when we compress the what we tell the delay instead of z inverse the delay the delay factor it has become equal to z raised to the power minus half because it has compressed itself due to compression it become half in that sense also we can simply directly tell that when we compress a signal it becomes uh, the half this z becomes z raised to the power minus half so now the final signal after decimation the final output is nothing but simply we can write as x of n on decimation gives x of z to the power half plus x of z to the power minus half divided by 2. So this is an important expression in terms of how we are looking at it, this area, this process. This is for the preliminary and uh, one more important property which I wanted to convey is regarding the the properties of the filter we had
in half. This is because we can directly start Dabochi next time. So the filter properties of this half were if you look at just this signal 1 minus z inverse by 2 and this was 1 plus z inverse by 2 or anyways um, I mean this was uh, this adder and this was subtractor in some sense so just see this low pass filter and this high pass filter you will observe that in this low pass and high pass filter there are two properties which are satisfied one which is magnitude complementality and second is power complementality in sense the sum of this both in magnitude will be uh, sum of this both which is h of z plus g of z h is generally represented for low pass and g for high pass is equal to some is equal to 1 or some constant and the second property just see if you add both of them they are getting equal to 1 the power complementality now this power complementality means that h of z mod of h of z whole square plus mod of g of z whole square is equal to 1 or some constant just see uh, if you if you think of it as a just try to derive this and this will come out to be true this both of them will come out to be true so this by this we end the 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 preliminaries which were required for us to approach the Dabochi's uh, wavelet or the series of wavelets out of which the R is just the first one.